Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to a, another video. I'm very glad you're here. Today is an interesting day and we'll jump right into it of course. So the topic of today is letting go the pathway of surrender. The reason I'm making this video is because I've just begun reading this book, Letting Go, The Pathway of Surrender by Dr. David R. Hawkins. If what I speak about in this video resonates with you and you want to read this book, I can't recommend it enough. And I'm only like 40 pages in or so. But, however, and he has another book called Power Versus Force that I recommend you read before you read this one. The reason why is, actually, you know what? Do what resonates with you. Look at these two books online, read the description. If this message resonates with you about this book, just buy this one, skip Power versus Force, maybe read it another time. If the other one feels like that resonates with you more, read that one first. I'm certainly gonna go back and read that one. I say this because Power versus Force was the first book that I had read by Dr. Hawkins, David R. Hawkins. And it's essentially a map of consciousness helping us understand what level of consciousness that we are currently at and what other people are at based on the emotions and the uh, energy, the being that they emit, the frequency that they carry. It fluctuates for all of us from day to day, but power versus force, the reason I initially wanted to suggest that one was he refers to levels of consciousness and the map of consciousness in this book. So my logical mind was like, you know, read that one, this will make more sense. But to be honest, I haven't read this one all the way through. So you may just read this one and get all the value that you need because now that I'm thinking about it, you can read this one or audiobook, whatever you do, and I know for a fact you'll get a ton out of it. I didn't really write a lot uh, down today in my notes or in my journal, even self-reflection because I am practicing what this book teaches. And it's a very simple mechanism. And I thought even maybe the best thing to do is just reread the introduction to you guys and you can kind of see what he's talking about. But essentially he talks about letting go. What it is, is we feel that when we have problems in our lives in any area, we try to think our way through it by thinking, what are the solutions? What am I doing wrong? What's a better strategy? How should I go about that? And I think there's value in that. But what he suggests is what we do as human beings is we suppress the emotion, we repress the emotion, the feeling of what's going on. And instead of just sitting there being with the energy of the feeling and the emotion, we think. And what he talks about is that when you learn to use the mechanism of letting go, which is chapter one or chapter two, I should say, because chapter one's the introduction, and you go straight to the root, which is the emotional feeling, the energy of grief or sadness, frustration, anger, uh, you know, unworthiness, whatever it is. When you just sit there and be with the feeling, it automatically dissipates the thoughts. And he refers to analyzing the thoughts and how that's detrimental and counterproductive because one emotion can literally produce a thousand thoughts. So you might think you're making progress by working through your problems by thinking them through, but he says, do the opposite. Just go to the feeling, the energy, the root, the emotion, and be with that and actually don't think. And that by doing that, you'll release the problems. And he just shared an interesting story that I'll also read to you. But I, I thought maybe I'll just read to you guys um, on this because again, I felt the need to share this video with you because I'm going through an intense transformation myself. And today was one of those days I just really woke up kind of down for no reason, right? But it got me reflecting and I'm like, what am I, you know, w what's going on? Why am I having blocks in my own clarity and my own thinking? And I realized because it's my own lack of practice in letting go the em of the emotions, the feelings that I have been carrying with me since I moved. So the backstory is, 
I just moved out to Nevada, Las Vegas from San Diego and I miss San Diego. I am, I lived there for 10 years. I went to college there. California is home to me. I spent my entire life there with the exception of these past two months moving to Las Vegas. I miss it. It's home. I'm homesick. I miss the beach. I'm not someone who sits in, I mean, I do sit inside and I like to reflect and all that, but I need to have bright, fre uh, you know, fresh air with my windows open. I need to have bright lights. I don't want to be inside in air conditioning because it's too hot outside. I need to be outside with my dog in the grass and in the beach with my shirt off in the ocean. And I miss that. And I plan on going back, but I came out here for a very intentional reason. And we'll get into that another time when it comes, when I make a video on breaking family trauma and karmic cycles and these things, but I miss it. And so the realization I had today was I'm blocking my own progress with where I'm currently at and what I'm out here to achieve because of my lack of practice and letting go of what was, which is the beach in San Diego and you know, that's home to me and I'm going to go back there. But if, in order to get back there, I have to let go of all of that for now so that I can focus on what needs to be done here, build what I came here to build. So I'm in a better position all around to go back to home. And so I'm, I'm kind of stuck. And I, you know, even right now, it's so funny. I feel, you know, I'm sure, you know, I'm just not fr flowing as freely. So I'm literally in the middle of processing and letting go of these emotions, but I still wanted to make a video because this is what I do enjoy and I hope it helps others. I'm getting feedback that it does, but uh, selfishly, I really enjoy doing this and I do it for a number of different reasons. So selfishly, it brings me enjoyment, but also unselfishly, I am here to be of service and share the knowledge and the approach that I'm going about things because I feel that that gives value to other people and helps them gain some insight on how they can overcome the difficulties in their lives. So without further ado, you know, I'm kind of all over the place. I'm just going to read you the introduction and then share an example that I thought really resonated that illustrates the mechanism of letting go in hopes that you go and purchase this book for yourself. And this might be, I feel like if it does resonate and you practice it, and I'm going to read through all this stuff probably a couple times, some real value in it. So introduction, while in contemplation one day, the mind said, what in the world is wrong with us? Why doesn't happiness stay put? Where are the answers? How do we address the human dilemma? Have I gone nuts or has the world gone crazy? The solution to any problem seems to bring only brief relief, for it is the very basis of the next problem. Is the human mind a hopeless squirrel cage? Is everybody confused? Does God know what he's doing? Is God dead? The mind just kept chattering along. Does anybody have the secret? Don't worry, everybody's desperate. Some seem cool about it, I can't wait to see what all the fuss is about, they say. Life seems so simple to me. They're so scared they can't even look at it. How about the experts? Their confusion is more sophisticated. Wrapped in an impressive jargon and elaborate mental construction, they have predetermined belief systems into which they try to squeeze you. It seems to work for a while, and then it is just back to one's original state again. It used to be that we could count on social institutions, but they have had their day. Nobody trusts them anymore. We now have had, we now have more watchdogs and in institutions. The hospitals are monitored by multiple agencies. Nobody has time for the patients who get lost in the shuffle. Look down the corridors. There are no doctors or nurses. They are in the offices doing paperwork. The whole scene is dehumanized. Well, you say, there have to be some experts who have the answers. When upset, you go to a doctor or a psychiatrist, an analyst, a social worker, or an astrologer. You take up religion, get philosophy, take the Erhard Seminars training, EST. Tap yourself with EFT. You get your chakras balanced. Try some reflexology. Go for ear acupuncture. Do iridology. Get healed with lights and crystals. You meditate, chant a mantra, drink green tea, try the Pentecostals, breathe in fire, and speak in tongues. You get centered. Learn NLP. Try actualizations, work on visualization, study psychology, join a Jungian group, you get rolfed, try psychedelics, get a psychic reading, jog, jagger, jazzercise, have colonics, get new nutrition and aerobics, hang upside down, wear psychic jewelry, get more insight, biofeedback, gestalt therapy. I was laughing when I read all this stuff because I'm like, holy shit, how much of this is me? Or all of us, right? That's the funny part of it. 
You see your homeopath, chiropractor, naturopath. You try kinesiology, discover your anagram type. Get your meridians balanced. Join a consciousness raising group. Take tranquilizers. You get some hormone shots. Try cell salts. Have your minerals balanced. Pray, implore, and beseech. You learn astral projection. Become a vegetarian. Eat only cabbage. Try macrobiotics. Go organic. Eat non-GMO. Meet up with Native American medicine men. Do a sweat lodge. Try Chinese herbs. Moxie combustion. Shiatsu. Acupressure. Feng Shui. You go to India. You find a guru. Take your clothes off. Swim in the Ganges. Stare at the sun. Shave your head. Eat with your fingers. Get really messy. Shower in cold water. Sing tribal chants. Relive past lives. Try hypnotic regression. Scream a primal scream. Punch pillows. Get Felden crazed. Join a marriage encounter group. Go to unity. Write affirmations. Make a vision board. Get rebirthed. Cast the I Ching. Do the tarot cards. Study Zen. Take more courses and workshops. Read lots of books. Do transactional analysis. Get yoga lessons. Get into the occult. Study magic. Work with a kahuna. Take a shamanic journey. Sit under a pyramid. Read Nostradamus. Prepare for the worst. You go on a retreat. Try fasting. Take amino acids. Get a negative ion generator. Join a mystery school. Learn a secret handshake. Try toning. Try color therapy. Try subliminal tapes. You take brain enzymes, antidepressants, flower remedies. Go to health spas. Cook with exotic ingredients. Look into strange fermented oddities from faraway places. You go to Tibet. Hunt up holy men. Hold hands in a circle and get high. Renounce sex and going to the movies. Wear some yellow robes. You join a cult. Try the endless varieties of psychotherapy. Take wonder drugs. Subscribe to lots of journals. Try the Pritikin diet. Eat just grapefruit. Get your palm red. You think new age thought. Improve the ecology. Save the planet. Get an aura reading. Carry a crystal. Get a Hindu sidereal astrological interpretation. Visit a trans medium. Go for sex therapy. You try tantric sex. Get blessed by Baba Somebody. Join an anonymous group. Travel to the Lords. Soak in the hot springs. You join Erica. Wear therapeutic sandals. Get grounded. Get more prana and breathe out and stale and breathe out that stale black negativity. You try golden needle acupuncture. You check out snail snake gallbladders. Try shocker breathing. Breathing. Get your aura clean. Meditate in Cheops, the Great Pyramid in Egypt. You and your friends have tried. All of the above, you say. Oh, the human. You wonderful creature. Tragic, comic, and yet so noble. Such courage to keep on searching. What drives us to keep looking for an answer? Suffering. Oh, yes, hope. Certainly, but there is something more than that. Intuitively, know that, intuitively we know that somewhere there is an ultimate answer. We stumble down dark byways into cul-de-sacs and blind alleys. We get exploited and taken, disillusioned, fed up, and we keep on trying. Where is our blind spot? Why can't we find the answer? We don't understand the problem. That's why we can't find the answer. Maybe it's ultra simple, and that's why we can't see it. Maybe the solution is not out there, and that's why we can't find it. Maybe we have so many belief systems that we are blinded to the obvious. Throughout history, a few individuals have reached great clarity and have experienced the ultimate solution to our human woes. How did they get there? What was their secret? Why can't we understand what they had to teach? Is it really next to impossible or nearly hopeless? What about the average person who is not a spiritual genius? Multitudes follow spiritual pathways, but scarce are the ones who finally succeed and realize the ultimate truth. Why is that? We follow ritual and dogma and zealously practice spiritual discipline, and we crash once again. Even when it works, the ego quickly comes in and we are caught in pride and smugness thinking we have the answers. Oh Lord, save us from the ones who have the answers. Save us from the righteous. Save us from the do-gooders. Confusion is our salvation. For the confused, there is still hope. Hang on to your confusion. In the end, it is your best friend your best defense against the deathliness of others' answers, against being raped by their ideas. If you are confused, you are still free. If you are confused, this book is for you. What's in the book? It tells of a simple method to reach great clarity and transcend your problems along the way. It's not by finding the answers, but by undoing the basis of the problem. The state reached by the great sages of history is available. The solutions are within us and easy to find. The mechanism of surrender is simple and the truth is self-evident. It works during daily life 
There is no dogma or belief system. You verify everything for yourself, so you cannot be misled. There's no dependence on any teachings. It follows the dicta of know thyself. The truth shall set you free, and the kingdom of God is within you. It works for the cynic, the pragmatist, the religionist, and the atheist. It works for any age or cultural background. It works for the spiritual person and the non-spiritual person alike. Because the mechanism is your own, nobody can take it away from you. You are safe from disillusionment. You will find out for yourself what is real and what are just the mind's programs and belief systems. While all of this is going on, you will become healthier, more successful with less effort, happier, and more capable of real love. Your friends will notice a difference. The changes are permanent. You aren't going to go for a high and crash later. You will discover there is an automatic teacher within yourself. Eventually, you will discover the inner self. You always unconsciously knew it was there. When you came upon it, when you come upon it, you will understand what the great sages of history were trying to convey. You will understand it because truth is self-evident and within your own self. This book is written with you, the reader, constantly in mind. It is easy, effortless, enjoyable. There's nothing to learn or memorize. You'll become lighter and happier as you read it. The material will automatically start bringing you the experience of freedom as you read through the pages. You are going to feel the weights being removed. Everything you do will become more enjoyable. You are in for some happy surprises about, uh, about your life. Things are going to get better and better. It's okay to be skeptical. I know, sounds good to too good to be true right guys but uh, it's interesting just jumping in I'll share my experience we're almost done with the introduction it's okay to be skeptical we've been taken down by the primrose path before so be as skeptical as you like indeed it's advisable to avoid gushing enthusiasm it is a setup for letdown later therefore rather than enthusiasm quiet observation will serve you better as it always does is there such a thing as something for nothing in the universe? Oh yes, most certainly there is. It's your own freedom, which you have forgotten and don't know how to experience. What is being offered to you is not something that has to be acquired. It is not something that is new or outside of yourself. It is already yours and merely has to be reawakened and rediscovered. It will emerge of its own nature. The purpose of sharing this approach is merely to put you in touch with your own inner feelings and experiences. In addition, there's much helpful information that your mind will want to know. The process of surrender will begin automatically for it is the nature of the mind to seek relief from pain and suffering and to experience greater happiness. That's the introduction. Damn, it's already up to 20 minutes and stuff. I hope that was helpful though, just to read the introduction. I know the book sounds too good to be true, right? And I'm only 40 pages in, so I can't speak to it. I'll do a full review when I'm done with it. But again, what he talks about is the mechanism of letting go and how it's incredibly simple to where it's so simple that our egos won't believe it because we want to overcomplicate things. It can't be that simple or else everyone would do it. Or what if it is everyone just looks to overcomplicate things because they're overtaken by their ego. That's kind of what I gather. And what he talks about is the mechanism of letting go. And the mechanism of letting go again is not sitting with the thoughts. It's not overthinking things. It's about sitting and being with our feelings, with our emotions. And by going to the bottom of the root of the problem and just sitting there being with the energy of anger, sadness, grief, fear, whatever we're experiencing, just sitting there, the cessation of overwhelming thoughts will go away. Not only will that happen, a lot of other magic and energy is being released in your body because you're addressing the root of the problem, which is this internal conflict that we have with emotional energy. Once we address and sit with the emotional energy and learn to let it go, surrender to it, it releases so much free energy for us to create with and opens up space for miracles to happen in our life. I know it sounds too good to be true. And I'm not going to lie, I'm skeptical as well, or it seems like I am aware of my own ego wanting to resist the simplicity of this as I am not, like I can't, I'm trying to sit here with the energy of what I'm going through and it's interesting. It's like, it is, I can see my ego being like, it can't be this easy. You can't just, you don't just sit here with your anger and not think anything and then everything gets better. And that's kind of what it's saying, or at least what I gather and see even how simple it is. I can feel my mind wanting to make this more complicated than it is. Um, last thing I was going to do is read a story that he shares, uh, in chapter two, the anatomy of emotions. 
Um, ba -ba -ba, understanding emotions. Okay. For example, there was a case of a man who misplaced his passport shortly before going to a foreign country. As the scheduled date of departure drew closer and closer, his inner panic mounted. His mind raced wildly, trying to think where the passport could have been misplaced. He searched high and low. He tried various mental tricks to no avail. He berated himself. How could I have been so stupid as to lose a passport? Now there isn't time to get another one. As the, fear, as the fateful day approached, he faced a real dilemma. No passport, no trip. Missing the trip had a lot of negative consequences because it was both business and pleasure and it would have created a difficult situation. Finally, he remembered to do the letting go technique. He sat down and asked himself, this is the key question. I literally asked myself in the coffee shop. I'm still sitting with it and will after this video. But again, I just wanted to make this. He sat down and asked himself, what is the basic feeling that I've been ignoring? To his surprise, the basic feeling that came up was grief. The grief was associated with not wanting to be separated from someone he dearly loved. There was also an associated fear of loss of the relationship or at least the weakening of it due to his absence. As he let go of the grief and the associated fear, he suddenly felt at peace about the matter. He also concluded that if the relationship couldn't handle a two-week absence, it wasn't worth all that much anyways. <clears throat> so there was really nothing at risk. As soon as he felt at peace, he instantly remembered where the passport was. In fact, it was in a place so simple and obvious that only unconscious blocking could explain why he had not remembered it. Needless to say, all of the thousands of thoughts about missing passport, about the missing passport, the failed trip, and the potential consequences instantly disappeared. His emotional state became one of gratitude and happiness instead of frustration. Letting go can be very useful in everyday life situations, but its use in life crises can be crucial in preventing and alleviating large amounts of suffering. This is more of a segue at this point to the next section. In a life crisis, there's usually an overwhelm of emotion. The crisis is tapped into one of our major areas of suppressed or repressed feelings. In this situation, the problem is not one of identifying the emotion, but how to handle the overwhelm. And that last paragraph was more about the segue into handling um, intense crises based on the letting go technique. So I suggest that you get this book, read through it. I'll share with you the other insights that I'm learning as I read through it. But it was very apparent to me this morning that I'm like, man, I don't feel stuck. I know that things are moving forward, but I am noticing a block and I am noticing resistance. And today I can viscerally feel some sadness or some like grief. I'm like, why do I just feel down? And for me, what I realized, the feeling that I had been ignoring was sadness or is sadness and it's grief and it's sadness and grief about the loss of the old life that I love that I left behind in San Diego, going out to the beach with my dog, not being able to, even right now, I'm temporarily staying at my brother's house and I'm super uncomfortable and being like a light worker and highly sensitive to energy. It's dense ass energy in my brother's house. It is not good energy. There's all kinds of stuff. He's got some crazy stuff going on with him and I'm not here to fix it. Um, and he wouldn't be open to it anyway. So there'd be no point um, in doing that. It's just, I'm feeling these negative energies and just really protecting myself while I get out of there, right? Um, there's all kinds of thoughts that come up with that because I know that I'm, I'm healing just by my presence there and I've already brought so much to light for all the people in the household, a lot of people are realizing things just by my presence being there, the way that I talk and I view things and I'll ask people questions and, you know, and they're uncomfortable with it because I'm kind of shaking it up, but I'm not like doing it intentionally. I'm just like, what do you think about that? You know, did you notice that you do this or like, you know, stuff that I see that I'm like, this is crazy that they're, they're asleep like this. Um, it's not crazy. It's most of the world, unfortunately, but that's why we're here. I like the way. So I need to go and let go of the sadness of the grief, which is the emotion, regardless of what created it. What created it was me moving out here and I, I'm sad and I'm grieving the loss of being able to go to my friend's birthday party at the beach last week and have a barbecue and wish I was there and take my dog out there. I didn't get to go because I'm in Las Vegas. I'm not home. I'm not in San Diego. So I have to let go of the sadness of the grief of everything that I left behind because it's the only way that I'm going to free up the energy and the focus as to what I'm here to create, which is very intentional. Coming out here was not on a whim. This entire thing was very intentional on so many levels, on a 3D physical level, but also on a karmic spiritual level. I'm here to do a lot of things, but I can only do them if I let go of the grief and the sadness, probably frustration and anger's in there too. I don't know. Um, I gotta start going through this. So today I didn't really have a lot to share in the words and like my own downloads, 
but I thought, excuse me, we share my experience and some of the practices in this particular resource that of course I was divinely guided to get. And I shared this in a video of how this book came into my life of what I'm supposed to read and what I'm supposed to practice at this point. And I feel that this is also part of the reason I'm here is to learn and master this technique so I can teach it as well. But um, it's in this book, Letting Go, The Pathway of Surrender, Dr. David R. Hawkins, Power Versus Force is another book I recommend, as I said. So we'll do our reading for today. Or for an, pull an oracle card, three taps to clear the energy. We ask for the purest and most divine truth and my highest good and the highest good of all and your highest good, of course. We shuffle up. Dude, the crazy. Okay, I'm gonna pull another one. And I'll show you when we pull because I pulled this like three times in the past two weeks. This one as well. The first one we pulled is the chariot. This is the one I pulled a couple days ago. I'm just gonna read the short reading. Determination and self-control, career advancement, acknowledgement of success by others. Second one, Seven of Raphael. Time to make a... I'll show you the picture. Time to make a decision. Be clear on what you want and take action. A need for detoxification. I'll read you the extended reading. There's all kinds of weird stuff going on around me right now. These people need to get their car jumped. Oh, that's so funny. These kids, they were like stuck there and I look at the guy's license plate and of course the first three numbers are 111. Yeah, I gotta go process some stuff. I'm doing the work too, guys. Like I'm right in here. Like that's what I always try to say in these videos. Like I'm not holier than thou. I'm just another guy doing the work, but I've been doing it for so long that I do have some things to share that have really helped me along my journey that I think can really help other people. Seven of Raphael. Time to make a decision. You may feel the situation is too complicated, but further research will re reveal the right course of action. Intuition provides useful guidance on how to sort through all the possible choices. Listen to your inner voice. Don't be lulled into daydreams. Get clear on what you want and then take action without looking back. If you're drawn to a particular bucket on the card, I'll show you again. The color holds meaning and guidance in making your choices. Any colors pop out? Each one of those colors in the buckets are correlated with one of your chakras. So if you're uh, drawn to any particular bucket or whatever color stands out, I'm sure you are, that may be the chakra that you need to work on. Additional meanings of the card, unrealistic expectations, procrastination, confusion, indulging in excess, a need for detoxification. For me, a need for detoxification stands out big time, but it's a need to detox from negative energy. And unfortunately, the environment I'm in right now is not conducive to that. So I have to do the best I can. And I'm not near the ocean, so I can't go dip in the ocean. So I need to be outside and do the best I can. So let go. And I think what this is guiding me to do personally, as I share my own insight for myself, is it's guiding me to learn practice and eventually master this technique of letting go so that the letting go is a way another way for me to clear and protect my energy so when i am around negative energy and the inevitability of picking up other people's negative energies thoughts beliefs whether they're projected on me or just by osmosis and being around certain places people and things it's another practice and tool that i can use to clear my energy to protect my art to protect my field and to keep my centered intuition and focus and clarity at, at peace and at one so that I can receive what I'm supposed to receive. So a uh, little bit of a different video, I guess, today, since I wanted to share that chapter with you and share the book, but also some insights. It wasn't a practice view, but we'll get back to it. What's most important is that um, I continue to make videos for myself and for you guys and stick to the plan. Um, and that's what this is also about. We'll talk more. So that's what I got for you guys today. Love you so much. And I'll see you soon. Peace.